So what I wanted to do was give you a brief understanding of this concept between a stress and a trauma. What is stress? How do we define stress? And what is trauma? Because a stress is not a trauma. And there are biological differences. And so there are key biological states that differentiate them. So let me just share my screen and let you see that here is a diagram of the three states of your nervous system. And this, these are the three states of the nervous system for every entire human body. <laughs> so it helps keep things simple when we're talking about trauma. That can be a confusing topic. Hey, let's boil it down to these are the three states of the nervous system and which state are we in and which state is the trauma state and which state is the stress state. So when we are looking at the states, the middle zone is called the parasympathetic uh, you uh, may also know it as the social engagement. This is where we want to be. This is when we are grounded, we are calm, we are our best selves. We are physically our healthiest, mentally and emotionally our healthiest, our most stable. And so this is where we want to be. A stress is going to be up in the upper uh, range in that sympathetic state. That is a stress. And something that is a trauma takes us down into that bottom stage, which is uh, the dorsal vagal freeze or overwhelm. So anytime during the summit that I'm using the word overwhelm, know that this is the state that I am talking about, and this is the state where trauma resides. There's no other state <laughs> where trauma resides. If we're talking about trauma, we are talking specifically about this state of the nervous system. So what makes the difference then between being a stress and being a trauma? So what makes the difference is something that is uh, signals to our body that we are not able to maintain um, that level of energy that we're putting forth towards the stress. So think of it this way. Uh, I don't know how many of you are bikers. I am a biker. I have done mountain biking. I prefer road biking. I have been biking for as long as I can remember. In fact, I can't even remember the first time that I went on a bike ride because I've just always, always been biking. And as as you get to know me, as we get to know each other better, you'll you'll understand like why is that so significant? Why has that been so significant to my life? Why does that represent so much to me in terms of even my freedom and my health? But for now, let's talk about biking. I went on a bike ride this morning, had a beautiful ride up through some canyon trails. And I'm, as I'm coming down, so I've reached the top of the canyon and now I'm coming down the other side and I'm going fast. I usually range between 37 and 42 miles per hour on that, on that road. And it's a if very bumpy road, especially as you near the bottom of the incline. And I have been climbing up this canyon for a long time. <laughs> At least it feels like a long time. <laughs> my legs are tired. In fact, when I stand up on my legs, because when you go downhill, you you know crouch down on your bike, you get yourself as low as possible so you can uh, minimize the wind and help help you go faster. So I'm down on my bike and my legs start to shake. And so what do you do? right? Like you say, okay, my legs are not able to maintain this. Let me sit down on the seat. So you sit down on the seat, but because the road is so bumpy, what happens? <laughs> you, it starts to become very painful, very painful. So this is sort of what happens with the difference between stress and trauma. When you're under a stress, your body is, is high energy trying to get you through this high energy trying to get you through something, but it can start to shake. You can start to uh, feel low on energy. You may be deficient in magnesium. You may be an undermethylator and have some high oxidative stress. There are so many different factors that can weigh in on when your body decides, oof, I'm too shaky. This is too much for me and I need to sit down on the seat. But then what happens is that when you sit on, on the seat, that's when you're going to get more trauma because of how bumpy the road is and your body has just kind of given up in terms of being able to hold itself up. So as we look back on this graph, this is this is what happens. And let me uh, let me see if I can move this down to the next um, slide for us so that we can see 
this is how trauma then gets stored in our body and what happens with a trauma. So we're going to start there in the middle window, the parasympathetic, and we have some type of danger signal. We have some type of trigger and we go into the stress mode. And just like me on my bike this morning, my legs will start to shake. You may start to be like, oh my goodness, this is too much. And your body signals that, hey, we don't have the energy, we don't have the nutrients, we don't have the support. It may not be something always internal in your biology, it may be the external support and resources that you have. It does not matter because it all weighs in on this signal that your brain decides, your nervous system decides, hey, we can't maintain this and we need to kind of shut down and go into a low energy state, conserve our energy so that we can get down the bottom of the hill on the bike. <laughs> and so we go into this overwhelm state and it goes from a very high energy to this very low energy and collapse. And you will, uh, you can even feel this. So we'll do a little, a little somatic uh, exercise here. And when you think of being stressed, what would be the posture that you take on? It's more of like a, right? Like it's a, it's a, a high energy. You're, you're ready to, to fight. You're kind of like, ah, hyper vigilant. Like, where's the danger? I'm stressed. Whereas when you think of overwhelm, what's the posture that you would take? It's much more of a collapse, right? It's much more of a, ugh, I have no energy. I'm exhausted. I can't do this anymore. Once we start having those feelings and those thoughts, our system has shifted into overwhelm and that's a trauma. So when we are talking about stress versus trauma in this summit, this is the difference that I need you to know. And do not worry, we're going to be going into this in a lot more detail. And if this is really something that you want to go into deeper detail, we're going to be doing this in, in the course, the 21 Day Journey, Biology of Trauma course, all of that is to come. But I want you to have this basic foundation of what is the difference between a stress, high energy, oh my goodness, I'm coming down this road, right? It's fast. It's, it's I've got to watch where the bumps are on the road. This is stress, right? And then overwhelm is, I, I can't do this anymore. I can't, I can't maintain this anymore. This is too much, too much for me, given the support I have, given the resources I have, given the inflammation I have, given the oxidative stress that I have, given the toxins, given the mold, given the brain inflammation, all of that, all of that comes into play to signal to our body when it needs to go from the stress state to something that is overwhelming and overwhelm is always the trauma state and in this bottom category. So again, when you're thinking, when you're talking about trauma, think overwhelm and this freeze response. And we will go into this more, um, but there is an acute freeze response. There's a chronic freeze response. And so we'll want to go over that. But for now, we just want to understand what is the difference between a stress and what is a trauma. Trauma is something that has overwhelmed our system, made it go into an energy conservation, low energy state, and there's all these feelings, there's all these emotions, there's always, always these thoughts that are associated with that overwhelm, but that overwhelm happens on a cellular level. And a stress is where there's a high energy still, very high energy level, and we are super focused on the problem, we're super focused on the stress, on the danger. But once that is passed, we come back into the, the uh, previous state of health that we were at before. With the trauma, we'll need to talk about that because you can come back to a previous state of health if you if this is an acute freeze and you resolve it, you do the somatic practice that we're going to be going into a lot more detail right after this summit. There's some of that in Dr. Peter Levine's uh, interview, so definitely watch that one. But there's this acute freeze and you can come out of that, you can complete the survival cycle or people often get stuck in the chronic freeze state and go back and forth between chronic freeze and sympathetic, chronic freeze and anxiety, overwhelm, anxiety, overwhelm and stress. And that is really where then trauma gets stored in the body and causes so many of these um, aspects that we're going to be looking at in terms of the biology of trauma. So do not, do not forget that every morning I will be doing a, um, 8 a.m. Pacific highlights for the day, talking about the different interviews, what you should be paying attention to, and then also giving you 
uh, kind of the through the lens of trauma, this is these are your takeaways for each of those interviews. If you have not registered, of course, please register. There's also the link that you can share with other people to let them get in on this free resource this week. And I look really forward to going through this journey with you.